Hi, this is Tim, and this is the beginning of our analog series where we're going to go through how to wire, control, and troubleshoot analog inputs and analog outputs. But before we start, I thought we should go through exactly what analog is. Because one, with everything going from the analog to digital transition, analog can sometimes seem like an older technology that you don't need to learn. But analog is extremely important, especially for more advanced applications. So first, everything that we've done till now has been mostly what we call discrete control. So that is where we are wiring a switch to an input and maybe we're turning on a light with an output. They are very basic. They're either on or they're off. So for example, switch one right here, we switch it on, the blue light comes on. We switch it off. The blue light goes off. Analog on the other hand, instead of being like discrete where it's either on or off, it in theory has an infinitely variable signal between the two. So for example, this tape measure here, really there is an infinite number of possibilities as far as what the measurement is. We chop it into divisions to help us measure. So it's in inches, then half inches, then quarter, eighth, sixteen, thirty second. But really, there is no ending to how fine of a measurement it can be. Because then you can even get down to these micrometers here, which can measure the little things that I can't even hardly understand. In fact, I hadn't even thought about this, but here you go. This dial right here, this is an analog measurement because we can rotate it around to really any measurement. Now we have lines on it to help us mentally understand what we're reading, but there is infinite possibilities of where I can turn this dial. So how does that equate to industrial controls? Well, lots of times it's fine to be able to just turn a motor on, turn a motor off. But also at other times, maybe you need to vary the speed of something, or maybe you need to get an accurate measurement of something. So for example, I have wired our analog simulator into um, this drive and I've modified it a little bit. I've removed the motor and I put a light in place. Just says it's a little easier to see than to see the motor turning. But if I go to a voltage source and then we're just gonna use the sweep cycle and we're gonna run the sweep cycle. And I'm gonna reach over here and turn this drive on and you can see the light, it's bright, and then it dims. Bright, and then it dims. What's happening here is our analog simulator is sending a signal between zero and 10 volt, and then back to zero to this drive, which is controlling the intensity of light. Now this is not an analog output signal that you're seeing on this light. This is actually a pulse width modulation, and we have a whole drive series coming out that's gonna go through that. Now let's get through some examples of analog signals that you're probably familiar with and try to start understanding why you would use it. So here we have a water tower, which probably most people drive by every day. But in that water tower, not only is there water, there's also sensor to help you know how much water is in the tower. Now here's where we could use a simple discrete float switch that if it's down, turn the pump on, raises up, pump goes off. But what if you want to know how much water's in the tower? Then you need a measurement of the depth of the water. And then you can do a calculation and figure out that you have this volume of water. Then you can use that to make decisions also. So let's say this water tower is fed by three sources of water and source A being the least expensive to treat, source B costing more and source C costing the most. Obviously, if that water tower is full, you don't want to use your most expensive source of water to top it off. But let's say it's only half full, then maybe you want to use your second cheapest source of water to fill it up. And then, okay, we're getting critically low. Maybe it's peak time for water usage. Then yes, maybe you want to use your more expensive source. So you can start using these analog measurements to make decisions that you couldn't make with a simple discrete along the lines of water. Let's say you were pumping water into a stream that had been treated. One of the most important measurements you'll want to make is pH because our wildlife needs to be around a pH of seven. So we don't want to dump water into a stream that say has a pH of four. So you would use an analog sensor to measure the pH 
of that water to see is it four is it ten or is it near seven where you want to be other examples of analog would be temperature pressure humidity pretty much anything that has a scale that's not one or zero is going to be an analog measurement all right next we're going to go through types of analog signals that are used in industrial environment because there are a ton of different analog signals out there but there are only a few that are really standardized on in industry and those mainly are 0 to 10 volt and 4 to 20 milliamp till next time hi this is tim and this is amber of tw controls we run the automation store be sure to subscribe for more great videos and like this video and comment on what you would like to see next visit our website where we offer a full line of plc's simulators control panels plc trainers and more